Welcome to your Flame Fundamentals training. Quite often in production, you may be required to blur a moving object for a variety of reasons. In this video, you'll learn how to perform the typical task of blurring moving objects. This is quite common if you must hide a face or a license plate. So you'll create a G-mask to isolate a face, track the motion of the face using planar tracking, and finally, blur or mosaic the face to hide the identity. To start the process of blurring a moving object, select your segment in the sequence and switch to the effects environment. Now if you're seeing the timeline range in the time bar, change the option to show only the segment you are working with. This makes it easier to work with the frame range of this shot. Now go ahead and choose a frame to mask. It could be the first or last frame, but let's use a frame in the middle to show how you could track forwards and backwards. Now isolations are done with the selective, so click the first selective in the result view. Next, go to the G-mask options and create a new circle from the preset. There is also the option to draw a freehand mask, but this will do fine for this example. To move the G-mask, select and drag the axis in the result view. You can also click on the mask spline and reshape the mask to fit the face more appropriately. To check the mask and its overlay, toggle the selective views with the F9. If you feel the feathering is a bit too much, you can adjust the gradient point on the spline or adjust the offset slider in the G-mask menu. You can go back to the result view and the G-mask shape is ready to be tracked. As part of blurring out a moving object, once you have created your G-mask, it needs to be tracked to its moving target. In this case, it's the actor's face and one method of tracking you can use is planar tracking. To engage the planar track, first you need to select the axis of the shape. In the Axis menus, change the tracking mode to Planar. Since the actor's face does change over time, enable the Auto Update References. Now you will be tracking from the middle of the shot, so let's first track forwards and then track backwards. Click the Analyze button and the keyframes will be created. To track the beginning portion of the shot, click the Go To Reference button and switch the tracking direction to backwards. Click the Analyze button again. With the whole shot tracked, you can scrub the time bar and see how the G-mask follows its target. If you come across a difficult track, there are other controls as well as tracking methods to help you achieve a successful track. These videos can be found within the learning channel. The last step in blurring a moving object is to add a blur shader to the isolated selective. Now by default, selectives usually start off with a master grade which gives you instant access to the color grading toolset. To use a blur instead of the master grade, go to the shader menu and change the shader. In the file browser, you will find lots of different shaders you could use with a selective. In this case, choose the Blur Selective Effects shader. When you increase the global amount, you can see how the face is now blurred out. So this method could also be used to blur other objects and not just faces. If you want to adjust the region of the blurring, switch to the G-mask menu and you can adjust the various properties of the spline. Finally, as an extra tip, if you prefer a mosaic to a blur, all you need to do is go back to the shader menu and change the shader. In the file browser, locate and select the dots selective effects shader. Set the shader to make squares and set the dot size to 1. Now scale the grid size to taste. If you don't want the scaling effect of the G-mask, switch to the G-mask menu and set the softness offset to zero. Please move on to the next video 
and don't forget to like and subscribe to the Flame Learning channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you.